Hello and welcome to day four of my 13 Frights Before Halloween and we're going to work on the first page and the inside of it with the fold out flaps. So we're going to be working on this segment today and we're going to start out on this side. We're going to create a little scene. So I picked the bats paper and I'm going to cut, I cut this three and a half wide. Make sure the bats are going the correct direction by five and three quarters tall and I've already inked the edges so all I need to do right now is put some adhesive on the back and I did zoom out my camera some so hopefully for the most part I will be in in the screen so that you can see what I'm doing on this video so we put the adhesive on the back and then go ahead and attach this down and you just want an equal amount of black on the bottom and all the sides. And burnish that down with your hands. You can use glue, just make sure you burnish it well with your hands or a brayer so that there's no bubbles. So we have that. And then we have the sticker sheet. So we're going to use the sticker sheet to create a little scene. So I really like this haunted house. And I may ink up that a little bit along the edges. Not a whole lot, just kind of get a little black lightly with the black soot along the edges and stuff to kind of blend that into the the edges some and then I'm going to attach that at an angle right here. Now the house is pretty big so we've already got the bats but I think I'm going to add a bigger bat from the sticker sheet. Let me see if I get this up and see how he looks. But put him more on the house. So I'm going to try to ink that up a little bit. Kind of get ink all over me of it. So I'm going to stick that down probably about right up here on the roof. Like that. And then I like these cats and the jack-o'-lanterns. So I'm going to put them towards the front, I think, to kind of make kind of layering. And you just play along with this to, to do the things that you want to do. I'm going to put them right about there, I think. Some cats and the hats, house. And let me see if there's anything else. On there, maybe not. How about this spooky, spooky banner up here at the top? So this first page, you could leave it without the decorations if you wanted. If you wanted to put a picture, that would be fine. I just kind of like to decorate it up. It's part of the, um, for me, like a title page or something. So that's it on the front right there. So then you flip this open. And then we pull this back so we have the magnet side. And again, this is cut five and three quarters tall by three and a half wide. These are ghost on this orange paper. Can you see that in that collection? And I've inked it. So I'm going to stick that down right there. So I'm going to peel this paper backing off where the magnet is. And then I'm going to add my adhesive to the back of this paper. Go ahead and stick it down so that my ghosts are running the correct direction. Like that. So this is going to close down over that. Now I want this side to match. So I cut a piece. This flap's a little smaller. So this one is three and three quarters tall by two inches wide. And it's also been inked. So I'm going to peel this paper off. The score tape and add my adhesive to the back so that when this is opened up it's kind of a continuation of this part here and this closes down 
So let's open this up on the inside. So for the inside, I cut the paper, the black stripe paper, and you could do it that way. But I kind of like this pattern split here. So these are the three and three quarter inches tall, and they're a little wider. They're two and a quarter wide. So I'm going to put this one on the left side. Halloween costume mask here. Make sure your adhesive is cleaned off the edges. And then this one goes on the right. So I cut this so that it would be a continuous look once they are actually lined up. put in the book like that. Okay, and this folds back, and that shuts down, and so then we have a piece here. And so I like the little witch, even though I'm not getting all the saying, I like this part with her, so I inked it. it has a little rough edge here at the top. So I'm gonna add the adhesive to this. And we'll stick that down. So page one and two are patterned, and we're going to look at it and see what we might like to do to it to kind of jazz it up. Okay. Now I could have put a little belly band. I had my original one. I had a belly band, but I like the witch. But we could put one across there, and then stick a tag in there. So let's. This side we've got done pretty much, unless we want to put something else down here at the bottom to give it more dimension. I have these. If you're a Halloween fanatic like me, you probably have all sorts of stuff in your stash that can be added to different elements. Kind of like that little owl. This is actually a pin, so I'm going to have to cut this off or somehow pull this out. I usually just use my scissors and pull the metal pieces out so that they're not holding it up. It doesn't hurt your Tim Holtz scissors at all to cut the brads and prongs off. And then I'm going to find me some foam tape or foam dots. Had to go around to the other side of my table. So I've got these foam dots, so I'm going to use a foam dot on the back, and I may have to have two, maybe that works, to kind of make it raised right there. So I like that, oh, no, that gives it a little more dimension there. So then we flip this over, and I'm going to add, I think, a spider web. So I'm going to turn the camera off and get my punch and some black cardstock. Be right back grabbed a piece of cardstock. It's six inches long and it's pretty wide. I'm not going to need the whole width. And my Martha Stewart spider web punch. And I stick it in, kind of line them up pretty the center. Oh, goodness. I hope my punch isn't messed up because it will not punch. So we may have technical problems here on this. Okay, hmm. I'm going to turn the camera off and see what we can do. I got it to punch. It was really, really hard. Uh, somehow it got stuck. Uh, but I wanted to show you how to line it up. So I've already done all the center and one end. And so you line it up with the pattern. Make sure they match on the punch there and then punch the other end. So here we have... Um, spider web. I have just a couple little pieces here that don't belong. They're just little slivers, so I cut them off. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that it sticks out over the edge onto this page, and so then you're going to see a bit of the border on the other page. Okay, so we're going to glue that on. Let me measure that. 
clean up this trash bit here. And we'll save this in case we need more. So turn your book, and that should fit just about right, a six inch piece. And I want it to stick out. So I'm going to trim just a tiny, kind of make an angle cut here so it kind of looks a little bit finished there on the edge, up at the top like that. So we're going to put a beaded line of glue right on the centers. I'm trying to do this without seeing where I'm at very well. Here we go. Got to get it unplugged. See if that works. Yep, there we go. Like on the center of each web. And then just down the center between where it connects. I don't want glue on the part that's going to be sticking up. Now the bottom part, you can go ahead and put a little bit on different areas of the web, just on the bottom, like that. And so I'm going to stick this right along the edge here so that it sticks up and then wipe off any excess glue. And so that puts a border there. And then when this other page is finished over here, it's going to show up more with some color paper there. So we've got that like that. And I want to add like a little belly band across here. So I'm going to look at my papers and I'm going to show you, I should have done this before I attach this paper. So. This is a ATG gun, so it will, should just lift up real easy. So a ribbon belly band, you need to plan it before you attach your pattern papers down. So I'm going to attach one end on the back side where the adhesive is, and then wrap it around here and pull it really tight around the back where the adhesive is. So I'm going to cut my ribbon off. And I'm going to add some adhesive over the ribbon that's on the back. And now we can stick this back down right here. And now we have a little belly band for some little tag or something that we can add in there. So I'm going to look, turn the camera off, and look at my papers, and I'll be right back. Create a tag. I went ahead and did this off camera because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But this little piece is cut out of one of the papers and I just trimmed around the edges where the curves are, the stubs are, and cut out the little legs, fussy cut that of the little skeleton. So cut out one of those and then I cut out a piece out of the ledger paper with the ghost on it and it is two inches wide by three and three eighths long. And then I'm going to take this ghost one and see if I can Punch. It's kind of short. Let's see, I want it to go this way. So I'm going to turn it upside. Hmm. I want the ledger paper to have a stub like that. So I'm going to see how this looks. I'm going to line it up and punch. Yeah, so it looks like it's torn out right there. And that's what's going to slide in there. That's the tag there. Now it covers up my little witch, but that's okay because you can pull it out. And if you just want to use a different uh, pattern stripe or something instead of the little witch, that would be perfectly fine. So that's going to go there. And then this little tag is going to be glued on to this one so that it hangs down a little bit. So I'm going to put this one in here. And I'm going to put a little line of glue on the back of the little tag with the scarecrow. I don't want the whole thing stuck. I just want it to fit below the ghost's face 
a little bit of his leg hanging off the bottom. And we'll let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to get some more eyelash string and I think a little bit of this black satin. Cut off some of this. We'll see how that looks when I tie a bow. Do this little black satin. It's got the little loopies. So I'm just going to tie a regular bow with the satin ribbon. Pull it in because I don't want it real, real big. This and cut the tails off. And see how it goes right here. If I could just make the loops a little smaller. See how I like that. Small enough to then tighten it. Okay. Cut off more of the tail. Okay, and that's going to glue right above. Kind of holds, hides the ghost face a little bit, but it should work okay. I'm going to put it right above the O of the Halloween. And I'm going to glue that down and let that dry. I'm going to hold it down for just a second. Let it get a good start. And then I'm going to take my eyelash string and tie a bow of it. Okay, I'm going to cut the long tails off, and then this glues down on top of the black bow. Okay, it just gives it more dimension, more oh, spookiness to it, and I'm going to hold that down. So I'm going to let that dry for just a little bit. The bow is dry, so we have our first page done. We have the first here. I see a little bit of the... Um, Cobweb sticking out at the top that I don't want, so I'm gonna just trim that off. Oops, right at the top. Kind of angle that right there. So we have the spider web. It sticks out over the edge. A little haunted house with the bat and the cats and the jack-o'-lanterns and the owl and spooky for our decoration. Have this all done on the left side and we turn the page you see the spider border with the bats. We have a little tag here that pulls up and then slips over so you see the witch underneath and then this slips over and it says Halloween Carnival celebrating the spookiest night of the year, and then Washington Elementary School, Halloween Eve, 6 to 9 p.m. That's kind of cute. And then we have the the bats here. Um, I think I need to trim a little bit off of this one. So, as I said before, the great thing about if you haven't let it sit for a long time, the ATG tape can be pulled up to allow for some adjustments to be made. So I'm going to trim this really quick and then re-ink it. About a two inch, two and eight. Okay. I just want to trim it down a little bit. I didn't quite like it sticking out so much on this, so it's more to this section here, so that when it folds, you see the black in there, like that, not some of the paper or the border. So I've got that back in, so we have this split sign in here, and then that folds up, the magnet holds it. And we have this little part in here. So next section, that's all for today. We have our first page done. So our next section, we're going to work on these two little flaps and the next set of pages for our day five. So I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.